we are grateful uh, that you're there uh, and uh, you are ready to receive that which the Lord uh, has uh, provided for us today and uh, to ask you to uh, just send the link so that uh, you can help others also to join, uh, invite people so that we can uh, be blessed together. It's good to share and so it's good that uh, we invite others. You can start a watch party wherever you are from your Facebook page so that uh, we can be blessed uh, together. Uh, I bless the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe uh, you've been well kept despite uh, the challenges that uh, we are facing. Uh, you've been well kept of the Lord and the Lord uh, is uh, going to bless us this day. We really uh, appreciate the grace of the Lord even at such like a time. Uh, the blessings of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the mercy that the Lord has uh, put on our lives and uh, we really appreciate for the gift of life that we also have in this season. My name is uh, Eric Muzami and uh, I'm going to facilitate this interactive session. I'm calling this an interactive session because I want you to talk to me. I want you to interact with me as, as we continue. Um, let us begin by a word of prayer. Dear Father Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you for this day. We appreciate for your goodness. We appreciate for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for allowing us, O oh Lord, to tap into your blessings this day, O oh Father. I bless your name, Father, because of the grace that is, O oh Lord, running into our lives, even unto this point, O oh Father. I want, O oh Lord, to ask that you bless each and every person who is viewing from the comforts of their homes, those who are at work, wherever they are, O oh Jehovah, each and every viewer who is in this uh, live broadcast, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you shall bless them. Let your word come and touch their lives once more, Lord. Let your peace that transcends human understanding uh, extend into their lives, into their homes, into their families, Lord. As we speak this word, Lord, I pray for utterance. I pray for uh, your anointing. I pray that, Jehovah, your word shall uh, fulfill its purpose, King of all the glory. And we know that honor and glory uh, shall be back to you, uh, King of all the glory, King of all the ages, O oh Master. We thank you, we honor you, and it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I can see um, uh, most of us are uh, actually coming in, and I believe uh, we are doing fine. Uh, I can see... Um, uh, we have people online. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mary, Marjorie, thank you for tuning in. Marjorie, thank you, Leah. You're saying you're tuned in. Kevin says thanks uh, so much for this interactive session for the youths and for the entire generation at large. Basically, the Tuesday interaction sessions like this one, we normally target the youth. That's why you'll see that our banner uh, was uh, posted and it said the youth ministry. So I want to ask everybody to tune in and especially the youth, to get what we have. Thank you so much, Lucy or Eric. Uh, you are joining us, and um, we uh, believe that we are going to be blessed together. Now, as we begin uh, today, uh, people like uh, running, and um, when you mention running, uh, when you just mention the word exercise, uh, people will start uh, thinking about running, and. Uh, uh, of late during this season, I, I've seen a lot of people running and uh, when you walk in the evenings, you'll see people jogging around. Uh, in the mornings, you'll see people waking up very early um, to jog around, to run and to come back. So running is one thing that people like so much. Although there are some people also who don't like it because not everybody wants to run. Uh, some people like it, others don't like it. But anyway, we shall... Uh, look at ra uh, running as a, a, a very important um, uh, parallelism to our Christianity, even as we continue. There was once uh, an athlete, a very young man, and uh, this young man was uh, in those interior parts of the Rift Valley, uh, maybe Iten, where people are athletes and they run. And this young man was just in the primitive village he was a young man, very green, very primitive, and um, he was uncivilized. <laughs> that means he didn't even go to school and he didn't know anything. So this young man 
uh, he knew that he was talented and he was an athlete. So he nurtured great dreams to go and run a, a big marathon in his life because he knew that he can compete. And so he dreamt and he had this in his mind that one day he will go and compete at an international level. And so because he had the dream and he had the talent and he knew what to do, so he decided to nurture his dreams. This young man resumed on working hard. He started working on his discipline. He started working on his exercise, waking up every morning very early, running up and down the valleys and the hills as, as he works on his body. He worked on his diet. He worked on his attitude because running also involves the attitude. Um, if you need to run, you have to be in the right mood. And so he worked on these things. He looked at the best environmental conditions in those hills and valleys. And so he knew that if he just made it in um, doing a race and making it through, then he's going to change his life. Because, you know, these guys run for only 40 minutes and you hear they got millions. So he knew that if he runs, the ultimate goal is to change his life. And so his life will never be the same again. And so this young guy, uh, keeping a teach from the interior parts of Iten, made it. And eventually, through the hard work, through everything, he qualified for a run. And he had to go and run a marathon in Europe, basically in London. And so when he went to London, uh, this was a dream come true. And uh, his dreams were now eventually unfolding the way he had planned. And so he went to run. And this was a very primitive guy. Imagine this guy had not um, even gone into Usta Vieco, leave alone the aeroplane that he was going to use to go and run the marathon. So he was very green. He didn't know things, but he was a runner and he knew he's going to run. So he went and the day came. And when the day came, this guy was given um, a good uh, running suit. He was given the shoes. And he was told, uh, now we can go and run. Uh, what they didn't tell this guy is that he's going to run a marathon in the city. He didn't know he's going to run in London, in the city. He thought he's going to run in the terrains that he used to run. And so, when he came, he was fascinated. Of course, this was a journey of uh, fascination and anxiety. And to him, this was very new. So they went to the start line. They, we had other athletes. And so the gun went off and they started running. This guy started running. But believe me not, a few meters in the run, he was caught up in the glamour of the London city. He started looking at the skyscrapers. He started looking at the slick vehicles, the clean streets around. He started looking at and at the, the people cheering. He, he got caught up in the, in, the, in the glamour of people cheering. He saw beautiful women cheering him. And so he started slowing down because of these events that was going through. He started slowing down. And um, as he went through, in the euphoria of anxiety, he lost his focus. He stopped running and started looking around because he was in a very, very unique environment. He stopped running. He lost his focus. He started admiring the city. He started looking at, at one point, he even entered a shop to see big screens being displayed there. And he was very happy to see them, forgetting that he was on a race. Remember, this was a race that he was focused to go and win. He was focused that this race, he's going to pick a gift. He's going to pick a crown at the end of the race. But unfortunately, he stopped running and he totally forgot about the prize and lost his purpose. Guess what? This young man never won that race. This young man had to be taken off. This young man's life never changed. Just because he got swayed up, he got distracted and he went off the race. Praise God, uh, brethren, ladies and gentlemen. I want to submit to you that the race that we run as Christians can be metaphorically compared to the race of this young athlete who was also running 
in this world. The only difference is that our race is a different race. And I want to submit to every person who is listening to me today, who is watching, and specifically those people who are still young, and the youth, those people who are still young in salvation, let me tell you, our race is a different race. And we are running a race. Note that this young man had some few things. Number one, he had faith in his innate abilities. So God had given him some abilities. God has, had given him a talent. God had given him the, the potential to run. And so he knew that he had the potential. Most of the time, God will deposit something in your life. And God intends you to notice what he has deposited in your life so that you can use it to attain the goal. God doesn't come to, 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 to force you to use it. You are the one to realize that you have it. You believe in yourself and you use it to attain your goal. Because in this race, there is a goal. We are going somewhere. Uh, secondly, he had to prepare to run the race. He didn't just wake up from anywhere and started running. No, he had to discipline himself. He had to go down to practice. Probably he had to look for a trainer. He had to get a manager. He had to do something so that he can run the race. And then um, there was a price set for him. <laughs> Ultimately, there was something he was going to get at the end of the race after running and winning the race. Unfortunately, this guy did not reach the end to get the prize. Glory be to Jesus. And I want to tell you today that it is so sad that most Christians run their race like this young man. Let me tell you, as Christians, it is important to know that we are in a race also. And this is a race that has been set before us. We have to run this race so that we may win. There's a race that has been set before us. And this race is the race of faith. This race is the race to commit ourselves towards getting the crown that is before us. That is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God has set a race. And we are running this race to win. Someone said that winners never quit and quitters never win. It's because if you have to run this race, then you run to win the race. You run to, to, to pursue, to conquer. You run to gain the victory at the end of the day. Because there is a race that has been set for us. God has set for us a race. And uh, in this race, God had already planned it. God has a plan for this race. That is why he, he, he gives us in Jeremiah. He tells us that he, he has a plan for us, a plan for our future, a plan that is going to, to, to make us ultimately reach that which he had predestined for us. When he says he has predestined for us, he means that he had already planned something for us. So as we run this race, we know that it's a race that has been set for us. As Christians, this race is not an accident. You are not saved by accident. You are not here just by chance. No, God had a reason for you to be here. God had a reason for you to run this race of Christianity and ultimately to gain the prize uh, for this race. There is a purpose and a reason why you're here. Rick Warren, in his book, um, Purpose Driven Life, he asks a question, and the question begs. And he asks that, why on earth are you here? It's a rhetoric that, that will come out very clearly when you sit down and think of what God has planned for you, and you think of the race that you are running towards what you want to do. So what are you here for on earth? That's the question we probably uh, get from whatever um, God is doing in, in our lives. I remind you that we are in a race, and this race, is a race that we are winning. We have to win. I also remind you that this race is a race that you run alone. We don't run many of us. Although we are many in the race, but you have yours. You have your specific race to run. And so you run your race to get your prize. Everybody has a race to run, and they have a prize to win at the end of it. Let us go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews uh, 12, uh, verse 1 to 2. We shall look at Hebrews 12, uh, verse, verse 1 to 2. Uh, as you get there, I can see um, 
thank you so much for, for tuning in. Uh, I can see we have, uh, uh, God has for us, Priska, you are saying there is a race before me. And so uh, he is my reward and it's my, uh, I have my inheritance. Uh, Brenda, Brenda, you are saying there is that which God has planned for me and that is the race. Thank you so much. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. The writer of the book of Hebrews says, Therefore, since we are so surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, the writer of uh, the Hebrews uses the race just the way we have used this young man who was racing. And he is metaphorically comparing the race that we are running as Christians with the normal race. Uh, when he was writing this book, he knew that people will relate easily to a race if he bring the concept of this uh, journey of faith as Christians. He knew that when people relate with the running, they will be able to understand very well. And I know with the perspective of the story that I gave of this young man, we can now see the race that we are running. We can picture it into our thoughts, into our souls, into our being, that we are running a race. And this race has got its course. And there is an ultimate prize to win at the end of the day. The writer of the Hebrews is talking about a cloud of witnesses. When you read uh, Hebrews 11, you realize that there are some people who have been accredited. Those people who were before. We, he's talking about people like Abraham. He's talking about the great warriors of faith. He's talking about those people who already went through the, the journey of faith and they conquered and they made it. So when he talks about a cloud of witnesses, he's talking about these people who went ahead of us and they have already made it. And they are examples to us who are in the faith. There are, these are the heroes of faith that surround the Christian community. They bear witness to the Christian community, to God's faithfulness, and of the effectiveness of faith. For us to know that faith is effective, we look at these people. And those are the people who surround us. They don't sit there as witnesses to see if we are running. They sit there so that we can look at their lives, read what they did, get revelation from what they did, so that we can run our race even more better. They offer us the motivation to run because if they made it, why can't we make it? This is where we look at as people who had already gone before us. Secondly, we have a course to complete. There is a goal that we want to, to, to reach. That's why it is a race. Otherwise, it would not be a race if there is nothing uh, ahead of us. We are going towards something. It's a marathon. That's why the writer is saying we are running with endurance. We, we, we have to sustain our efforts. We have to, to, to have determination and commitment even as we run this race. And so the race before us is not just an easy race. We need that perseverance. We need that endurance. There is resilience that is needed. We have to exude that exuberance, the tenacity to, to go through uh, this race. And I know that God is going to help us even as we go uh, through uh, this race. Because it is not easy. Nobody should tell you that it is easy. It needs your commitment. It needs your uh, commitment to go through. We are being told that we fix our eyes on Jesus. Since he is our motivation, Jesus already went. And he has given us the leeway. Jesus is our ultimate prize at the end of this run. At the end of this run, it's Jesus whom we are looking up to. Because he is our example. He exemplifies our faith as seen uh, in what he did on the cross. He endured the cross. He, he, he endured the assignment that he was given. The, the punishment that was given at the cross. He made it a humiliation publicly. And he, he scorned it. And so we are able to go through and win. We are able to go through and achieve that which he had set for us. Praise be to God. For a runner to succeed... They have to throw off all the hindrances. 
uh, all the impediments that are along the way, all the weights. As Christ followers, we therefore ought to lay aside all the baggage. If this faith race has to be successful, if we have to run triumphantly, we have to release all the weights that are uh, in our lives. There is a lot of things that hinders our lives. People, people carry a lot of weight in this journey. People carry a, a, a lot of things in this journey. People carry uh, baggages. People come with, with, with a lot of things in this journey. And as Christians, we should be able to see these things and do away with them. I've seen Christians who are in this journey and they carry a lot of hate inside them. I've seen Christians in this journey and they carry bitterness in them. I've seen Christians in this journey who, who are carrying unforgiveness in their hearts. Have you ever heard somebody who says, That is somebody who is in the Christian race and they are carrying their bitterness. They are carrying the, the, the heavy hearts of unforgiveness. So we need to lay aside all the weights that are burdening us as we move forward with this race. Praise be to God. There are some, some of the weights that, that we carry. And I want to, to, to consolidate them, a few of them, and discuss as we continue. The weights that we carry along, the weights that can, can hinder us from attaining our goal even as we continue. There is one weight, we call it the weight of comparison. The weight of comparison. When we start comparing ourselves, we get distracted. We stop running our race and we start running other people's races because we are comparing ourselves with the others. And so we lose our focus on our race and we start running other people's race. Paul says in Galatians 6, uh, Galatians 6, 4 to 5, that each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one of us, carries his own load. You are carrying your own load. And so don't compare your load with somebody else's load. The weight of comparison will only wear you out as you constantly measure yourself with others. Run your race. Young men, young ladies and gentlemen, you will see them running other people's races. Have you seen somebody buying a suit because the other one had bought it and he wants a better suit than that one? Have you seen people going to the choir because somebody else is singing in the choir and they want to sing like them? <laughs> Have you seen somebody who wants to preach like pastor so and so and they want to match their skills with them, not knowing that this pastor is running his race and so you have your race to run. Do not compare your race to the other person. We are running the same race but everybody has his own way. Everybody has his own purpose. So do not compare your purpose with the other person's purpose. Run your race. Be on your way. Check your way. Look at your purpose. Look at your goal and reach it and you will be fine instead of comparing with somebody else. The second weight is the weight of competition. <laughs> and this is seen so much in our churches. The weight of competition. Let me uh, tell you that the essence of competition is that there is a winner and there is a loser. That is competition. But the real thing in Christianity is this, that we are all in the same team in Christ Jesus. If you have to lose so that I win, then it means I'm pursuing a wrong thing. And that will bring division in the church or in the body of Christ. So when we start competing with each other, we get divided. And this is not what Christ wants us to do. Remember in 1 Corinthians uh, 3, where uh, Paul was, was telling the Corinthians that some are for Apollos and some for Paul. But he tells them that he planted, uh, Apollos planted, but he watered. But the one who came to make it grow is the one whom we shall look up to. It is God who makes it to grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have no purpose and each will be rewarded. So whatever you do, you will be rewarded according to what you have done and your purpose. Whoever is doing this one, whoever is doing this one, it doesn't matter. 
So long as we are all running this race and we are together in the race, we are a team in Christ Jesus. And so we should work as teammates. Each and every person in a team has a specific role to play. Look for instance at a football team. There is a striker whose role is to attack and get goals. There is a defender whose role is to defend his side. There is a midfield who is, supply, who is supposed to supply uh, balls to the striker. So there is this combination of these roles which allows them to win at the end of the day. And when they win, each and every one of them gets the crown. Each and every one of them get crowned and they win as, as one body. So stop comparing yourself to the other person. Stop competing with the other person. Just because they bought a car the other day, don't go to buy a car. You don't know why they bought their car. Maybe they have a heart in missions. They want to use their car in missions. Just because uh, they opened a church the other day, don't go open a church. Just because um, they sing very well, don't go and sing because so and so is singing so that you can sing better than them. That does not happen. In Christ, we have our path and everybody runs their, their, their path. The third one is the weight of compromise. Most Christians will want to compromise. Compromise drags us into sin. By the way, when you compromise, that's when you enter into sin. And that is when we compromise the race that we have been set by God. Look at the young man we are talking about. He compromised along the way. He looked at the beautiful cars. He looked at the beautiful roads. He looked at the beautiful women cheering him. And he decided to compromise the race with what he was seeing. He decided to go sightseeing instead of running. He left the course and went to other things because he was compromised. Compromise is something that we should not allow. Because it brings us into sin. And sin is very, very serious. As Christians, we cannot take sin lightly. As Christians, um, we can't afford to joke with sin. I mean, it is sin that took Jesus on the cross. So, we cannot sugarcoat it. We cannot call compromise weakness. You have seen people saying, uh, my weakness is just, uh, uh, I admire my weakness. That's not a weakness. When you go into sin, then you'll discover it is not a weakness. It is sin and it should be called sin. People have changed things and they, they, they have compromised to an extent that we don't even know what is right and what is wrong. They have made things that are worldly to look as if they are uh, Christian things. And that is how we compromise and fall into sin. We have taken the patterns of the world and brought them into Christianity. And we are using these patterns to justify ourselves as in we are doing it in the right way. Not knowing that we have compromised and we are falling into sin. So the weight of compromise is also very, very bad. And uh, people say God will understand. Ah, mungu ataelewa. Mungu ataelewa nilichukua. Nilichukua hiyo pesa ju mimi siku kuwa na rent. So you decided to steal somebody's money to go and pay rent. Mungu ataelewa. That's some compromise that we make. Mungu ataelewa nilikuwa natafuta job. So I had to pay some money so that I get the job. God will understand. God will not understand because of compromise. So the weight of compromise will make us not to run this race in the best way. And it shall make us to, to, lose, to lose focus. Because we shall be weighed down and we shall be called off. But there is hope even as we go on. For we are sinful. Our nature is sinful. There is hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The fact that he died on the cross, he took the victory. We can go back to God in repentance to ask for forgiveness and continue running this race. Because this race uh, needs us to continue running. We can't stop running. We have to run this race. So even if we get entangled by the weights, even if we get dissuaded by the things that we look at, like this young man who was running, we, we get distracted by beautiful things around and we leave our course. We still have hope to come back, to ask for forgiveness and continue running this race of faith. As long as Jesus tarries, you still have that opportunity. As long as Jesus doesn't come today, you still have that opportunity to run your race despite the distractions that you had gone into. Come back to Jesus. He is forgiving. He is loving. He is caring. 
and he can accommodate you back to this race and still give you the prize that is ahead of us. Praise be to Jesus. I want to ask a question at this juncture. Uh, what are some of the things we do to run this race? Just talk to me. Tell me what are some of the things that we do to, to, to run this race. Because it is our race and you are a Christian. You've been running this race. So tell me what you do as you, you run uh, this race. Thank you so much, uh, Shiribu Injira. Uh, he says that uh, our problem is when we don't run our race. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there is hope. That's what Brenda is saying. There is hope. There is hope. Uh, welcome so much, Jastron, you're watching. Tell us uh, what are some of the things we do as Christians so that we can run this race. What do you do as a Christian? What are you doing to run this race? How, how have you made it this far? Because you didn't start here. You started somewhere and now you're here. There is a way you've been running this race and we are here. Praise be to God. As we look at how we are running this race, there is a way we should run this race as Christians. I read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 24 to 26. It says this, do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? In uh, gets the prize, sorry. In such a way, um, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. Paul was telling the Corinthians that there's a race and there's how we should run this race. Um, the first thing we get from this uh, scripture is that there is some optimism. So we should run with optimism and expectation. As you run this race, how do you run it? Run it with expectation and uh, being optimistic. Of, of the race, even as we go on. In Philippians, Paul uh, says that I press on towards the goal. I want to win the prize for which God has called, uh, has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So there is a prize. And when you expect a prize, then you run like somebody who needs that prize. So we should run with optimism. We have to keep on running, no matter what. Even when you feel you cannot run, go on. Even when you feel that your faith is going down, boost it up. Even when you want to give up, go on. Never give up on this race. Just move on. Someone says that if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then, then just crawl. So long as you're moving and you're moving in this walk of faith, brethren, continue moving. You cannot give up at this point. Go on running. Go on running. As you continue with optimism, it is very good to look at where you're coming from, where God has brought you from. Remember where God brought you from. Some of us came from places where we cannot explain. Some of us came from broken families. Some of us came from, from dungeons. Some of us were brought from, from places that you cannot tell people. Some of us cannot explain how we were educated. But in all these things, God brought us up. I like what David says in Psalms 40. He says that I waited upon the Lord patiently. <laughs> and the Lord came. He lifted me from the slimy pit, from the miry clay. That is where he lifted him from. And he set my foot on a rock. God is going to put your foot on a rock. And this rock is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This rock is the rock of ages. This rock is where you cannot be twisted. You cannot fall. When you are stepping on this rock, Look at where you came from and focus on where you're coming so that you can move on because God has placed you on a rock that is firm. There is a firm foundation in this rock that Jesus, uh, uh, that God has placed us. And so, let us run. God has not brought you this far to abandon you. He's not going to leave you here. Some of us think that we have suffered so much so God is going to leave us. No. We have gone through this coronavirus season, so God is going to leave us. God is not leaving us. He's not yet through. There is a purpose. So continue running this race. It is a race that we must run. 
We should also run this race with self-control. We need to have a dominion from inside out. We need to go into strict training and maintain precise control. If we don't have a strict focus and control within us, this young man who I talked about did not have this control. He could not control himself from the anxiety that was surrounding him. So he decided to fall away just because he did not have self-control. Self-control is very important to a Christian. As you run this race, you need to be controlled from within. You have to have an opinion that comes from you that is firm and unwavering so that you can run this race in the best way that you can run to win. Self-control will help us not to be swayed, not to turn off the track. And so when we are self-controlled, we can be focused. We can run our course and avoid all the other things. When you are self-controlled, you don't take bribes. When you are self-controlled, you don't fall into traps that have been set for you by the devil. And let me tell you, those people whom we are with are the ones who set traps for us. Most of the times we fall into traps because of the people whom we walk around with. So as you get self-control, check who is with you, who is moving with you. Praise be to God. Thirdly, run with a certainty and a purpose. We ought to run with certainty, not like a person who beats the air. Paul says that he's not just beating the air, he's not doing shadow boxing, he's running. And so, run with certainty. Look at the people who are walking with you. Not everybody is supposed to walk with you. Not everybody is supposed to go with you. So, run your race. Run your race. Some people come to ruin our races. Some people come to distract our races. As you run, you have to have a purpose so that you don't give up, so that you don't listen to the voices that speak from outside. There are voices that speak. Once you get saved, they say, oh, he has gotten saved. Oh, he has, he's now praying. He's very prayerful. He's acting holy. Let them speak, but you know your pride. When you come to church, you wash the church. You, you do a service in the church. You are committed to the service of God. They will say you are, you are enticing the pastor so that the pastor will like you. No, that's not the truth. The truth is that you are running your race. Do not be distracted. Do what God has asked you to do. If you have been called to be an usher, be an usher without listening to other people. If you are a preacher, preach it like you'll never preach again. If you are supposed to be cleaning the church, clean it and never listen to people because you have been called to a race and you have to maintain this race up to the end and depend on God. As I conclude, depend on God. As you run this race, depend on God. It is good to know that you cannot make it on your own. On your own, you can't make it. You can't do it. You will fail. So depend on God. Depend on God so that God can help you. And as you depend on God, you pray. As you depend on God, you fast. As you depend on God, you praise and you worship him so that he can come and help you ease the route, ease the course as, as you go home, as you continue going towards your, 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 your course. Thank you so much, uh, Prisca. Prisca is saying, staying disciplined to the fundamentals of Christianity, like studying the word. That is one thing she does to make sure that she's on this course. The fundamentals of Christianity. He's talking about the word. There is prayer. There are a lot of things you do as a Christian to make you um, go ahead. Uh, Winnie, Winfred says that I refuse to be distracted. Don't be distracted, no matter what. Uh, Steve Alube says that I take my race as, as unique to me. Yeah, it is unique. It's your race. Don't look at someone's race. It is your race. I fix my eyes on Jesus. Brenda says that being accountable to someone, very important. We talked about those people whom you work with. Those are people who will help you to go ahead and continue with the race. Thank you so much. Finally, brothers, our relationship with Jesus puts us in the race. You are not in the race if you don't have a relationship with Christ. It is your responsibility to serve him in this relationship. So I just want you, from where you are, know that your relationship with Christ is the one which keeps you in this race. Without that relationship, then you cannot. So I want to pray for you if you don't have this relationship. If you are not saved, if you have not accepted Christ, 
Just close your eyes and pray this prayer as we continue. Father Lord, I thank you. I bless you. Thank you for this one who has come uh, before you. I know, God, you have a reason and a purpose for them. May you save them. May you remove them from where they are and put them on the track. Now pray this prayer before me. God, I thank you. I bless you. I come before you as a sinner. Save me from the darkness. Put me back on your race. Forgive me my sins. And teach me your word. Lead me in your way. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. And I know we have learned a lot. And God has given us a perspective in this race that we are running. Let us not be like that young man who ran and lost. Who did not change his life at the end of the day. Remember at the end of the day, there is Christ. And God is watching from wherever he is. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, uh, for your word. Thank you for touching your people. Let your word do its work. Thank you for your utterance. Thank you uh, for everything. Thank you for the youth who are listening to this broadcast because you have a purpose for them as young as they are. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, continue watching our broadcast every Monday, uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday. Every Tuesday we have uh, our lunch hours like this one. Uh, every Wednesday we have our midweek services at 4. Uh, every Friday we have a lunch hour like this one at 1. And uh, every Sunday we have our Sunday service as from, 1, as from 11 a.m. in the morning every Sunday. So do not hesitate to join us. Just log into our page and you shall be blessed. Our pay bill uh, is, is working. It's on. So if you have to pay your tithes and your offerings, please uh, just use our pay bill. Uh, you can see it's running, it's down the screen there. You can use the number to pay your offerings so that the work of God does not get stuck. Support the work of God and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Till we meet again, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you.